You know, I, I really thought it was going to be bottle caps and lighters that were going to be the currency of our latest apocalypse. But nope. Nope, I was totally wrong. It is toilet paper. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Zokradowski of We Are Change Oregon. And in this video, we will be going over all the important news that you need to know for today, March 11th, 2020. Since, of course, a lot of utter nonsense is happening in the world right now, where we are going to be doing our best to make sense of it here in this video. And before we get started, don't forget to check out our backup channel where we are releasing at least three videos a day. Click subscribe, click the notification button. We got a whole new brand new show going on right now that I think you guys would like a lot. I definitely would recommend checking out. Now, obviously the most talked about story that's been going on for a very long time that we've been covering from the very beginning is of course, surrounding the coronavirus pandemic, which was officially declared that by the World Health Organization today. In my opinion, a little bit too late, especially with the spread of this new virus from Wuhan, China, going all over the world, while showing no sign of global decline, ravaging communities and countries all over the world, specifically the medical community. That, by the way, the majority of relies on China for its medical supplies. Now, if there ever was a blunder behind the Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller plan to open China to the world, AKA set up slave factories in China while replacing middle-class jobs in the United States, all in the name of globalization. If there ever was a flaw in that, it was particularly depending on all of our medical supplies, specifically here in the United States, to be dependent on a tyrannical nation that wants to be the number one global hegemonic power in the world. Yeah, that um, doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. And at least, at least, hopefully this latest tragedy with the coronavirus lets us realize that the United States and the world should not rely on China. Yeah, you save you save a few pennies, but uh, overall, at, at what cost? Especially with major production in China being down, since many of its people aren't willing to work and don't want to work and aren't allowed to work because of government regulations. Uyghur Muslims and thought criminals replaced some of the factory workers that aren't working in China, according to the Australian press. But overall, surrounding this coronavirus, this should be a huge wake-up call to a lot of people to understand that they need to be self dependent on themselves and no one else, and to understand that most governments are full of crap and they're panicking themselves, which is exactly what's happening. Again, I went over this in a specific context in a video about the coronavirus that's gonna be coming out later today on the backup channel. But yeah, with US government agencies having conflicting talking points with the United States government, not following the proper protocols to stopping a pandemic, of course, it only makes sense that this virus will spread from here, especially in the United States, with many experts predicting that we are only a few days behind Italy and the huge disastrous event that's unfolding there. Now, again, this is a very strange virus and it is affecting other countries more than others. Some people have no symptoms of this virus at all. Some people survive it even when they're 103 years of age while other people who are in their 30s have no pre-existing conditions are thrown into the hospital in intensive care. A lot of variables, and I think a lot of people don't even know the full scale and ramification of this all because number one, in the United States, the testing has been extremely limited. And in order to stop a pandemic, according to the protocols, you have to have aggressive testing. Donald Trump is literally talking about corporate bailouts of the oil industry right now for the billionaires that already took money hand over fist blindly and i'm sorry if they didn't save a little bit of money from all the billions of dollars that they've been making but this is not the right move and if we were going to take this serious again the protocols to stopping a pandemic means paying for the tests and paying for people's hospitals visits because they shouldn't be afraid to visit the hospital and sadly because of our crooked corrupt medical system and government regulations and bull crap we have a system where people literally are indebted for the rest of their lives because they visit a hospital you don't see that problem in other countries like mexico and many other countries in the world and to first approach this problem donald trump one should make these tests for free and anyone hospitalized because of this coronavirus 
should not have to pay a steep medical bill. That should be the proper thing done here, not to bail out his billionaire oil buddies. For freaking sakes, what is wrong with this dude? Again, again, uh, all you have to do to, 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 to mitigate this problem, again, is, is, is take the steps that Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea have been making following the protocols that are pretty basic, but no. No, no, no. We, <laughs> we we have to bail out the oil industry. And again, we can't even get the tests right in the United States. With, of course, many experts predicting that the number of coronavirus patients is much, much greater than the official rate. Since, of course, the CDC has very strict regulations on who they test. But, of course, it's not just the virus that you should be looking out for. Again, most likely the majority of people will be fine. It is the effects. It is the panic. It is the run of the toilet paper and the economic effects that some people say will spur a crash just like the similar one we saw in 2008 that again wasn't officially dealt with it was just paid over with more irresponsible bad decisions by these bankster elites who are being absolutely reckless and again all the possibilities here are on the table as some <laughs> <laughs> Some, uh, they, mu they must be Andrew Yang fans, are, are recommending right now to hand out cash to people in order to save the economy. Again, uh, just really stupid, idiotic ideas when in reality you can make concrete steps to stop this and the government's not doing this. Again, the effects of this are still mild. We're going to see the larger effect of this soon, but already major sports games are trying to mitigate the spread of this virus by not allowing fans into their stadiums the tokyo olympic games may even be postponed and if this virus continues on its trajectory that would be the common sense rational thing to do since again we're very early here and i'm taking this situation seriously i know there's a lot of talk about conspiracies and all this other stuff and again if, if you think I missed something, if you think I'm not seeing the full picture here, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But I've been following this from the very beginning. The actions of China make me worry a lot since, of course, they don't care about human life. And they've been taking grave measures to try to stop and prevent this virus. That, of course, they covered up. They harassed, threatened, arrested doctors and journalists who tried to warn the world about this while, of course, prioritizing secrecy, which guess what? The U.S. government is doing as well. Instead of being open and transparent and letting people know the truth so they can know what they're actually dealing with so we can actually face this problem together. Nope. The U.S. government, the White House, is specifically ordering all health officials to treat any meetings they have around the coronavirus as, clo as quote, top secret and classified, restricting information from the general public so you don't know what they're up to or what is really happening and that is a stupid asinine move that will only spur more panic you don't want more panic well guess what be transparent tell the truth take the preventative measures you can and tell people what they're dealing with so we could actually prepare for this and not be stuck in a rut where there's no supply of freaking toilet paper anymore and slowly after this figure out a plan to my to not be dependent on china for basic medical supplies that are in short supply right now so yeah early stages right now with the virus it will spread the situation will get worse more health officials more prominent people will get it and i really hope the people that we were warning about from the very beginning of this to prepare actually did prepare now in related government doesn't know what's going on panicking and is lost news we of course have the latest news about joe biden who is now coming to be the front runner in the democratic 2020 presidential election as even during his victory speech not so long ago <laughs> he appeared to forget that he was running to be president of the united states but he did urge bernie sanders that lost decisively to joe biden to give up on the race and to endorse him Bernie Sanders held his own press conference, said if he would lose, he would endorse Bernie Sanders. No surprise there, but that he is still running in the race and will be debating this guy with a short temper that curses <laughs> on fellow union workers while talking about some non-existent uh, <laughs> AR-14s. Which, by the way, MSNBC, during their coverage, during this viral video, by the way, I tweeted it if you, if you want to watch it. 
just go to my Twitter account, Luke, we are changed. But during MSNBC's coverage of this, they kind of congratulated Biden. They got rid of him saying full of ish. They got rid of him yelling at a woman twice to shush. And then they attacked <laughs> Bernie Sanders during this clip. So yeah, obviously clear bias. There's individuals on CNN that are saying that when, when Biden wins, it's like a dream come true. Literally, that's that's the reporting and the most trusted name in news on CNN. Oh, they're not biased here. They don't have a, a horse in this race at all, right? And The Intercept really came out with a great article that's titled Democrats and their media allies impunged Biden's cognitive fitness. Now they feign outrage. Definitely worth the read and would we'll check it out if you have some time. And in related older sad guy news, we of course have the news today that Harvey Weinstein was sentenced to 23 years in prison after being found guilty of many serious allegations against him. A sentence that will most likely lead to him being in prison for the rest of his life. And this is definitely a fall from grace since this man acted with impunity, even hired ex Mossad agents with an intelligence agency connected to him called Black Cube to spy and harass on journalists who exposed him and the victims who spoke out against him. This is a major move and a major cornerstone that is extremely significant since for decades this man was untouchable because of his political connections. Also, this man was connected to, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, Hillary Clinton, Kevin Spacey, and other unsavory types. And many people are hoping with this case this is one domino of many to soon fall of these supposed elites who think that they could get away with anything and everything. But... I want to leave it up to you. What do you think of this major decision? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Did he deserve it? Did you follow the court case? What are some of the important facts here that you think people should know about? Let me know down in the comment section below, which I always check and answer within the first hour that a video is out. I always enjoy being able to do this research, to do this homework for you every single day. And I'm only able to do that because of you. And this is why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on We Are Change dot org.